Guys, welcome to part one of the Mark One hybrid build. Let's cut some plastic. Just beginner's tips. When you're using the sprue cutters, just make sure you get that flat face right up to the part. As uh, you cut it off the, the runner, it's just gonna make cleanup just a little bit easier. I'm starting out on the suspension components, usual parts of a tank kit to build first. And of course, clean up the parts on every part, even though these, these guys won't be seen, just makes really good practice to uh, clean up all your parts, make sure that you get a good fit. Just very light sanding using, this is a two-sided um, skinny uh, sanding stick. One side's a little bit coarse than the other. You can just swap in between them. Feel the part with your thumb, make sure that that uh, sprue join is gone. But when it's totally level, you know you're finished. Another quick tip again, a lot of parts can be fitted close up to the model and then you can add the cement later. This uh, applicator brush for this liquid cement is pretty good, pretty handy. It's quite long, reach those bristles, make it kind of easy getting those um, less accessible points. And just applying a few pieces of liquid cement prior to fitting this uh, component. I believe this is a armor plate that helps protect some of the uh, more delicate parts of the suspension or extra armor. Not quite too sure, but let's just stick it on as per the instructions. Well, eventually that is. Yeah, working on some more suspension components. These are really large uh, spring bogey mounts. They're quite thick attachment points because uh, it's quite a big piece. And another method of cleanup, of course, is using your hobby knife, X-Acto knife, to just scrape away at the connection point. Useful in these larger components where they aren't so delicate and if there's a shape to it, and this one, it's got a contour to it, sometimes a little bit easier to use the knife first prior to sanding. Just another tip, something you may or may may not wish to do. And finish off with the, uh, the sanding stick, just to clean clean up that, uh, that mold seam on there. And of course, just remove totally any sign of where the sprue attachment was. And moving on with fixing these um, axle mounting points and the spring components onto the chassis. The hull, as I pointed out in the review, has those really nice, big, thick attachment points. 
um, making it very easy to mount these springs and also to make sure it's all very nice and flat and level. In some ways, if you wanted to alter the suspension, you would have to do quite a lot of work if you maybe wanted to pick some uh, changes in level, but um, in our example, we've just got a, a standard tank sitting flat, um, very easy, very easy to, to uh, construct. And some smaller components going on. Yeah, make sure that you put these on. I can't remember the instructions. It didn't give you exact order of fitting them, but make sure you put on these smaller parts prior to the larger ones, or else you will have uh, a little bit of difficulty getting them on after the larger components go on if you follow. Yeah, some of the linkage points going on now. Just building up all that detail. Very, uh, I suppose, accurate, comprehensive detailing on the, on the suspension components on this Merkava kit by Tacom. Sadly, as you see later, you will not see much of it because it will be hidden by the side skirts, but it's all there. And using the same trick again of putting parts up against the fixing point and then applying the cement later just to hold it in place. And again, using the, uh, the craft knife exacto knife to remove those uh, rather thick attachment points remove any of the sprue connection points and tidy up prior to fitting the components That's the springs getting dry fitted in place. In that example there, you can just see those bogey units, how they fit in there. And supplied in the kit are, as I mentioned in the review, these track jigs. They also serve to check the level and the alignment of the um, the, the axle points on on the um, on the suspension. Now just fitting the transmission cover in place. And these are the covers and the return rollers for the upper part of the track link. So covers for the suspension, um, hydraulic, the spring units and, and the support for the upper track run. 
The road wheels are very well done in this kit. I didn't understand how they, um, why they were composed of so many parts, but as you'll see in a minute there, to give this um, uh, in-depth effect. Um, I remember on the AFV kit, the Centurion, they used a rubber outer ring. And on this kit, Tacom have simplified it to only three parts, which is excellent. Uh, make sure that all these parts are super well cleaned up, as you're going to see in the next point, uh, because they need to assemble together uh, perfectly. I'm using a coarse sanding stick in that example. Uh, I do that quite often on road wheels and give them a bit of texture. And this is the assembly. So first of all, you've got the road wheel itself. This is really a spacer to uh, create an extra liner inside the road wheel. And then finally, an outer component, which also has detail in it. So when you look inside that wheel, you're going to see like two rings uh, with a, a indent inside it. So um, they capture that detail perfectly. So I dry fitted the wheels all together and then I simply ran the liquid cement all the way around the seam. And it was very simple to construct. Yeah, and finally you just join on to the... Okay, so also we need to do a bit of detailing here. The instructions calls out on the idler to drill a one millimeter hole at intervals around the outside of the idler. I've just shown you there one of them that I've already done. And this one needs to be drilled out, so I'll show you how I do that. Uh, you get a supplied jig that perfectly fits around the idler. It won't slip or roll around. And I used a Tamiya electric, dr electric drill, like a battery powered drill. And I believe I used the 0.8 millimeter drill bit, not a one millimeter because it was easier to drive through that plastic with the 0.8. And just simply work your way around, drilling all those holes out. Did not take very long with that electric drill, I must say. And there you can see drilled all the way through. This obviously is a detail that cannot be captured in the molded part, so that's why you're required to drill these out. But, you know, all credit to Tacom for, um, you know, providing a very easy way to do that. So we've done one side, and then simply it fits both ways around because the idler is basically the same on both faces. And drill out the other side. Just work your way around. There's no danger of um, slipping or anything. It, it works very quickly and easily. And it's time to fit all the road wheels. They press very securely onto those axle stubs. Notice at the very front position, 
has got that um, lightning holes in the front, uh, you know, that, that very first position of that road wheel. D don't mess that up, don't put it in the wrong position. And we're starting on the tracks now. They are link and length tracks, but uh, let's start off with the individual links. These are the ones that are used to wrap around the idler, the drive sprocket, etc. So I apply cement on one part and I work in pairs, joining one part to one part to make a pair and then pair to pair and then etc. etc. Use liquid cement as always in the joint and leave them for a little while to get the cement to set prior to um, rolling them into position. They are pretty snug fit actually, even without the cement. So that uh, makes things quite nice as well. Can't tell you about the accuracy of the tracks. They, they look good. I don't know if the guide horns are hollow or otherwise, but um, no problem, very good system. I do rate uh, the, the um, uh, Link and length tracks is my favorites. And then second for me are individual track links. Uh, third would be metal type links like Frules, etc. And the ones that I don't really like, in some cases they're okay. Some of Tamiya's rubber band tracks are pretty good. But the other ones, some of them are being kind of poor, like vinyl type ones are really difficult, um, as, as you, some of you guys will know. So the track jig, I, uh, I'm just showing you here how it works. The top run goes in place and then um, what you do is you join on these sections on and start wrapping them around here. I'm wrapping it around the uh, drive sprocket. So you're going to get the, the fix and then you can take them off and they'll be set up in that position. And here's an entire run, basically an entire run, except the bottom length. And this is getting wrapped around the idler. Those little notches in the jig hold against the guide horns. So it kind of locks it kind of firmly. I am trying to remember if I had to, if there was one, I think I had to lose one link from what it said in the instructions can't quite remember okay and this is another way of doing it which is basically to take a formed part so this was formed already on the, on the track jig and I did upper track run and then the components that wrap around the idler and the component that wraps around the drive sprocket are on there So I lined that up, got it in position. And then I did the final bends actually in situ on the tank. This is really the way I prefer it. I like the track, the track jigs, don't get me wrong, but as you see the way I build things, I build everything nearly to completion. So I will actually, these tracks now are getting on cemented in permanently in the place now. Um, and I'm gonna show you, of course, later on how to paint it, but this is the way that I work. Uh, a lot of guys will have their track separately painted, but I really prefer this method. I find it so much easier. And you can see here the final length, which is the bottom run, is gonna get joined on. And I, I cement it onto the road wheels as well. Not only those points, because I, I want I want that track link really, really pressed down 
on the road wheels so there's no way that there's any chance of it lifting off or a floating tank or anything so this is the method I use and just making that final join you need to use a bit of pressure hold them on there you go that's that's basically it make sure while the stuff is setting off uh, sometimes the um, the glue joints will actually constrict so you can get gaps so make sure you check on it um, for at least the first 30 minutes or so uh, you know make sure it hasn't come away from the drive sprocket idler make sure you're happy with the set of everything um, like you can see I'm, I'm adjusting and continually adding you know cement where it's required And the other thing I will do is I will actually add some weight on that. So like a bottle of thinner or something, just to make sure it sets. Here, here's a dry fit, some of the components. So we're already on the upper hull now. And I believe that part is being cemented in place after the dry fit. There's a few components to add in prior to um, the upper hull being cemented to the lower hull. And this again, this is a dry fit, just showing you how all that goes together. It, it does really sort of snap into place quite well. Make sure you plan out how you're going to cement that in because um, the way I've done this with all the tracks in place, you're going to have a little bit of difficulty getting cement to flow into all the joins, but you can do it. I cemented one area first, which I believe I started at the back, let everything set up and then just did final attachments at the front and used a bit of pressure to make sure that seam was really good. Didn't need any putty whatsoever there. And some of the detailed components just going in the lower hull here, just using some... Um, angled tweezers to hold them into place a bit of cement on the component and then offer it up to the hull And I went straight in and added on the side skirts as well. So all these are going to get cemented into position. They aren't, they aren't going to be a uh, loose fit. So anybody who builds modern armor and a bit of World War II German armor will know that side skirts are kind of nice because um, you can get away with sometimes not building the top, the top run of a track because uh, you just simply can't see it. So again, like I, I will just basically build everything as far as I can and leave a few sub assemblies but we'll talk about them later these uh, side skirts they just needed a little bit of cement just at the top mounting points uh, fit was really good I think I did make a bit of mistake initially I think I put them on the wrong way I had to remove them put them back on but Everything came good in the end, so uh, no, no problems. And I think this is just the other side going on, repeating the process on both sides. I think there were some differences in some, some parts, but they're basically a mirror of each other. Again, really nice fit. I better explain the reason that I do join up so much together is I really like secure construction. I don't like chancing parts falling off too much. 
So this is really the method I've been employing for a long time now. I did at one point build uh, kits and have track links off and paint them and then assemble them later. But I did have quite a few problems. So I, this is the method I use. Uh, of course, guys, everybody, everybody has their own ways of doing things. I like a really solid build. So I try to get everything cemented. Of course, when you've got bare plastic joining to bare plastic, you get a much stronger bond than you do with paint. Uh, if paint is on the surfaces that need to adhere, uh, you don't get uh, a really, really strong joint. And of course, you also can cause some uh, problems with your paintwork as well if you're applying cement later. So just the final few pieces of the skirting going on. You can see in this video as well, I use quite a few different camera angles. Uh, need some feedback from you guys, What which one works best. I think this was probably, yeah, at this later stage, I found this was the easiest way to build and to make the video. So as long as everything's clear, this is probably how most of my videos will look and then I'll, I'll do a bit of close-up stuff as well. I think I'm just checking the alignment on there, making sure everything's lined up. Yeah, just a few more components going on. Tidying up everything as always, just really good practice guys to get into is even if components can't be seen, it's best to tidy them up just because you may well find you've got some interference later on and it can be really frustrating if you find that parts don't join later because you didn't tidy up a, a burr. I mean, kits nowadays are designed on computers using CAD systems. So the tolerances that are really quite fine on, on some of them, uh, like one manufacturer, Mini Art, you need to get that, you need to get everything perfectly um, sanded, lined, etc., or you will have problems that follow you throughout the build. These tack on kits are a little bit more forgiving. They have um, much lesser part count as well, on, on particularly on, on some kits. And uh, I've never found any problems with any of uh, any fit issues, etc. Et so they have become a bit of a favorite brand of mine. Um, not as simple as Tamiya, but better detailed than Tamiya, so so bear that in mind. Um, and this this kit went together very quickly. I did this build over two days, so this is the second day. We're coming to the construction of the turret now, and there's a few bits and pieces that all get added on prior to uh, joining the bottom part of that hole. So I've, I followed the instructions more or less, uh, adding components on there. Some of the really more um, fine parts, I think I might have added them later on. That might have been my deviation from the instructions. Remember as well, guys, just to like, always look a few steps ahead to see what you, what you need to do later on. Also, another tip for you as well, if you can't see the part exactly where it joins on the instructions, skip a few pages ahead and maybe on the 3D images, you will see exactly where the point, where the part should attach. I think I'm joining some of the hatches on now. Yeah, these are the uh, blowout panels that are going on here. Fit again, perfect, no problems and builder's tip as well here um, if you can apply cement at the back do so because then you're not going to have any cleanup issues or any glue marks or anything so in this case like with that panel i could apply the glue at the back and then just check at the front make sure that all the alignment is okay So 
Same thing with this other blowout panel. Add the cement at the back. Just makes it easier, especially on something that's, um, that you can do that. Why not, you know, make it, make it easy for yourself. There's quite a few detail, all the small, more fiddly parts are usually on turrets. Um, this one, no exception really. Yeah, quite a lot to do. Now, so I'll point out here, I did leave off some parts off the turret, and we're gonna do, we're gonna, I'm gonna come on to that in part two of the build. Part two of the build is gonna be on super detailing, and also on the application of a anti-slip surface. So that's gonna get sort of interesting. So at this point here, there's some components I need to leave off because it could interfere with the anti-slip. So um, they got left off. I believe they were parts like the spare track links that go on the on the turret. So so those parts didn't get glued on at that stage. But I'll, I'm going to explain all that when we do the second video. So now we join the the mantle. The mantle it sort of clicks into like um, a mount on the lower part of the turret, and then lower top join. Real simple. Clicks on again. Pretty good fit. Pretty good fit. Definitely no need for any filler whatsoever on this. Make sure you work it away, work it around first. Make sure you've got, again, clean your cleanup's good and just, it'll click into position. When you're sort of working it through, you, you know when it's right. You'll, you'll know when it clicks in, when you've got it all right, all the way around. And of course, I've done that prior to the glue. Yeah, yeah, definitely here, just obviously a part that I didn't tidy up properly or I just need a little bit of adjustment just to make sure it all fits together per, as best it can. Not perfectly, but as best as it can. And then, of course, saves you work on putting or sanding and stuff like that. Just general tips. A lot of you guys will know all this, how, how to do all this stuff. Yeah, and adding the liquid cement last. It will flow in. Of course, um, if you're familiar with these, um, these glues, this is a capillary action glue. So basically, it does work better when parts are dry fit together and then um, you run the cement into the join, into, into the, um, the construction join because if you attach it to components, like large components, and then try and fit them together, a lot of the glue can evaporate prior to them, uh, prior to the parts being able to uh, weld themselves together. So 
So just work, working it way around that, that seam line there, making sure it's all nice and secure. What's interesting, one thing I did find out, even though the mountlet is, looks as if it may be poised or angled, you'll actually find out once you clamp that turret on, both sides on it, you cannot move that mantlet whatsoever. So it's actually a, a fixed in place. Yeah, just checking around, make sure that the seams are coming good. the um, smoke discharges and come off so I think I had to reattach it at that point. Yeah make sure that that mantle is clicked down into position once it's clicked down you'll actually feel it snap into place and it's lock solid at that point now it won't be you won't be able to adjust the elevation of the barrel and dry fit the barrel Barrels two, two, two parts. Just showing you a bit of cleanup on it after you've cemented the barrel. Leave it, leave it a really long time, like maybe four or five hours, so that the glue is totally set and that the plastic is hard again. And then just sort of, I use a knife first of all to scrape the seam, and then using various. Uh, sanding sticks you're going from coarse to fine and and, and you'll, you'll tidy up that joint no problem whatsoever if you still find you've got a, a joint there you can add putty or my favorite actually is um, super glue uh, for this type of application because it will it will really capillary into any um, fine seam lines any sorts of um, area where you, you you need fine putty and you can do it really quickly and i may do that in part two video just show you quickly how to do a bit of seam filling using super glue okay so this is a bit of the, the fine work now on the turret basket um, it has a rail that runs around it uh, a little bit tricky you know I mean it's fine work just use very small quantities of, of glue um, some people make the mistake of adding a lot of glue because of these fine parts but really add the smallest amount you can and there you can see that I'm adjusting its position making sure that I'm I'm happy with the sit and then finally add cement to reinforce the join and it's as simple as that yeah give yourself time uh, take it easy and you'll have no problem whatsoever okay and this is the photo etch fret it's really small actually um, there's very few points what you have is here what we're doing is the um, the turret basket the floor of the turret basket and this is one of my favorite tools. It's a Zuron photo etch uh, scissor. Uh, really, really sharp. I find it much better than anything I've used before to remove um, the photo etch components. Uh, it's similar to a sprue cutter, you know, a really good sprue cutter in that you can get really close up to the joints and I use a Tamiya diamond file to remove any burrs. You can use sandpaper or another type of metal file, but make sure you, you do remove the burrs because uh, I have not previously, and you will actually find the photo etch components will not fit where they're supposed to, 
or you'll have them jumping up or out of position because those, even though it's like 0.1 of a millimeter, a very fine amount of, of burr on there, you'd be surprised what it will do to a part unless you have it, uh, you know, trimmed off, cleaned up, good practice always. And super glue, super glue for me, I use the cheapest stuff you can get, uh, really because it does not last so long. So this is like, um, you know, like $1 super glue and you get five of them or one pound, one euro, whatever you want to call it. Just make sure it's fresh, really, because it only lasts about a week. And then small dabs onto the plastic component in this case, just because it was easier to do it that way. So this is the um, turret basket. Just fine amount of super glue. Yeah, make sure everything's covered. It's best off just, just do it once. Don't do it twice. So I tend to get everywhere that needs a super glue will get the super glue i don't go back and reapply it so that's ready let's get the photo etch component if you can have it with tweezers all the better everybody knows what happens with the super glue photo etch that stuff will stick everywhere your hands the tweezers once it's got in position, I use a bit of pressure. Be careful because the super glue will weep out. Your fingers will stick to it and everybody's been there. Fortunately, this kit is um, really friendly in those terms. There's, there's very few pieces of photo etch required on, on this one. I think four or five in total. And this is probably the most important part, this uh, turret basket. Okay, these are the, um, the storage bins that go on the rear of the turret. And um, these are really nicely detailed. I have to say the way they did the fabric and everything was really... Uh, cool and then they're supplemented with this photo etch um, to make them as realistic as possible so they uh, use these components here just repeat of the same same uh, same type of thing that we do with turret basket these fit perfectly on there's some little cutouts and these things fit spot on there's no problem whatsoever really nice when it's like that when they don't fit it's pain but when they when they fit like that it's great and really only small amount of super glue required i use just that really sort of stand i don't use thick i used to use thick gel type super glues but i don't anymore i just use the the normal liquidy type stuff uh and the cheapest stuff i can get And just one more to do. If you guys want to ask me anything about or any sort of areas that we want to, want to talk about for Wedge, anything, just uh, pop it in the comments, of course. Yeah, any, anything that you... Um, I'm trying to aim this. This sort of build was aimed at sort of a intermediate... I'd say intermediate builder. Yeah, you, you, you would have had a few builds under your belt this will be a really great kit to move on sort of like to push on to the next level it's just it's just right in terms of part count not over complex um fit is good so you don't have any of those like headaches or worries um a lot of the tack on kits are like that so we're definitely going to see a few more i'm gonna try and go for some unusual stuff later on but i'm gonna always throw it out to you guys on what you want to see 
like a new kit like this. But thanks again, guys, and I'll see you in the next part, okay?